All right. Uh, so I'm going to skip all the multiple choice portions. Those are basically reading checks. Uh, you should read a book and get them right. I mean, you could as well. Yeah. So let me just focus on the uh, calculation parts. Now, for the even for the calculation questions, um, the hint tries to give you help uh, where it's needed. Um, <laughs> a lot of times it'll say review the section. And it's mainly because the key uh, formulas, key relationships you need to use, they are in the section. So it says read the photoelectric effect because the question is about energy of photon. And the section itself goes into what expression gives you energy of the photon. There it is. Energy of the photon is H, Planck's constant, times frequency. That's the key equation, key expression, key relationship you need to use. So that's why it says read the section. So assuming you've done that, uh, let me <laughs> write it down on the side for myself. Um, the energy of the photon is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. And, oh, well, there, it's also there. <laughs> and Planck's constant is given here. And, um, and now you do need to recall from earlier wave chapters, this relationship between the frequency and the wavelength. That's why I'm giving you that relationship. Uh, because for some of these questions, you'll be given the wavelength instead of the frequency. So you have to be proficient in doing the calculation. So let's go ahead and do this calculation. So the first question, we are given the frequency of the radio wave. Um, so just to spell it out, the frequency that's given there is the 80 megahertz or 80 times mega is the metric prefix meaning 10 to the six or a million, 10 to the six hertz. Um, so I have Planck's constants there. So, all right, let me, uh, let me do this on a calculator. Um, yeah, let me, uh, um, I think it's easier, uh, Ulfram Alpha is the easier way to do it. So I think you can do that for yourself. So let me demonstrate this on a calculator uh, for those of you who want to make sure that you know how to do this on your calculator. Um, so this is a kind of a um, standard-ish layout for calculator that should be relatively common, hopefully. So let me do H, 6.6. .6 to six and power of 10, it's this button for this calculator. Oh wait, not that button, sorry. Oh, where's my, oh, I think it's that one. Okay, let me do 6.626. .6. This is the times 10 to the power of button, so 34 minus. So this is the Planck's constant in SI unit, joule times a second, times this number here, 80 times 10 to the 6 hertz, 80 times 10 to the 6. Hertz is 1 over second, so that 1 over second will cancel out the unit of second here, giving me unit of joule. So equals, uh, gets me that. Can I display that in? Oh, oh I know. Um, um, so uh, how do I explain this? So whatever number I have here, I don't actually want to plug in that number. Uh, I want to plug in that number um, uh, without this uh, power of 10 part times 10 to power of minus 25. So how do I express this? Um, let me express uh, this uh, number here. The number that's represented here. Let me use just the letter, um, I don't know, X to represent this number. What I want to plug in here isn't actually the X. Uh, let me call this uh, Y. The relationship between X and Y is that X, the number that's there, is equal to Y, the front part of this number, times this power of 10, times 10 to the minus 25. 
So what I need to figure out is a dual calculation, a quick calculation, so that I'm solving this uh, expression for y. So the thing to do here is multiply the whole thing, both sides, left-hand side and the right-hand side, by 10 times 25. With this, what I'm hoping to get is this will cancel out this 10 to minus 25, and, oh, and this times x will go on the left-hand side to give me x times 10 to the 25 is equal to y. So remember that this number here is x. So what I'm going to do is multiply it to 10 to the power of 25 to get me this number that I need to plug in at the front here. So uh, times again, um, this time it's going to be 1 times 10 to 25 equals, ah, there it is. Now let me erase those things that are getting in the way. Um, so 0 0.53008 is that y. So um, so just plugging in 0 0.53, and I, I don't think I need all those uh, um, zero, uh, all those other stuff. So uh, so let me just to submit with this to kind of make sure that I'm on the right track. Fine, good. So let me finish the other two so that uh, I can finish this question here. Um, actually, I guess, uh, let me not do part C because um, 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 part B and part C are basically identical with the two different uh, uh, wavelengths. So if I do part C, I uh, sorry, part B, then using the same method, you should be able to do part C. So for part B, this is the challenge. Um, so you have this uh, relationship here, which gives, uh, where's my color? Uh, this relationship here, which gives you the energy of the photon in terms of the frequency. Part B doesn't give you the frequency. It gives you the wavelength. That's why you need a relationship that was under the hint earlier, which tells you that uh, frequency is related to wavelength by um, um, <laughs> speed of light <laughs> divided by wavelength lambda. Uh, let me just double check. That's how I gave it to you. Yeah, frequency is C over lambda. I don't know. Sometimes I give you the other form and uh, leave it to you to do the algebra. Um, but all right. So uh, I guess one thing I can do is to cut down on some extra work is uh, do a little bit more algebra here to plug this into the expression for photon energy. When you do that, you get photon energy is equal to Planck's constant times speed of light divided by the wavelength. So you can just plug in all your numbers into this one expression. Now, it is a bit of a um, work when you are doing this on a calculator. So um, if you want to use, uh, if you want to use uh, all from alpha and uh, do it in an easier way, that's fine, not a problem. But let me just uh, do a little more calculator exercise here. So I have 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34. So that times speed of light, which, uh, oh, which is under hint. I mean, I, well, um, I don't actually need that 2.998. Let me just use three. That's going to make things easier. Three times 10 to the power of eight. Um, divided by, and um, the 570 nano, nano is the prefix meaning 10 to the power of minus nine or a billion. So let me do that, 570 times 10 to the power of minus nine meters. Um, so equals, all of that is that, and oh, this time, um, now I don't want to plug in 
four nine times ten to the minus nineteen joule because I'm only entering this head number here. Uh, without the times 10 to minus 18. Now you see that this uh, power isn't the same as 10 to minus 18. So what I need to do is the same thing as before. I need to multiply by something that will cancel out, 10 to minus 18. So what I do is times 1 times 10 to 18. When that's multiplied to 10 to minus 18, that will cancel out, and it will give me just the leading number there. Okay, so that's a 0 0.3. Uh, I think I can actually enter 0 0.35. There's enough tolerance there. I can actually do 0 0.35. Submit, and that's the correct answer. Um, for part C, you follow the same procedure. You just uh, um, use different numbers. So hopefully all that makes sense. Let me go through the rest of these questions here. Um, question four is, so um, it says, follow this tutorial to calculate the energies involved in a photoelectric effect experiment. And you know, hint it says review the section 13.2. And the reason I do that is to have you, uh, one, find this formula for photoelectric effect. And then later on, there's gonna be something that relates the kin uh, kinetic energy or rather the maximum kinetic energy of the electron to the photon energy and what we call binding energy or the work function. So read all that, get to that. I happen to remember those, so I'm gonna just uh, use what I remember. So the first expression I need to use is the one relating the photon energy to the uh, photon frequency, or here, because I see that I'm going to need to relate that to wavelength, I'll need to write down, so photon of uh, Planck's constant times frequency, which is going to be, be become equal to H times speed of light divided by the wavelength. This, this is, once again, using the relationship between frequency and the wavelength. So, all right, now I'm going to use a slightly different value of Planck's constant. I'm going to use this one. The difference between this number and the other one you saw previously is what unit of energy we are using. You can read all about the um, electron volt unit. I won't do that, except that this is the number I want to use. Um, I think that's uh, everything I need. I have Planck's constant, I remember C, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Um, and the wavelength is given. Yeah, so let me do all that. Uh, so Planck's constant is 4.136 times 10 to the power of minus 15 times the speed of light, three times 10 to the power of eight divided by the wavelength, which is 360 times 10 to the power of, the prefix for nano is minus nine, so minus nine. So having put in all that, equal to the energy of the photon is, oh, pretty simple, 3.45 uh, electron volts. So 3.45 electron volts. Let me do all the submit all at once because I don't know what's going to happen to the image that I deleted. Okay, it says if the binding energy of the photocathode is two, what is the maximum kinetic energy? This is why I ask you to read the chapter because if you have read the section, you see that the relationship is very simple. The maximum kinetic energy is photon energy minus the work function. So I had a photon energy, 3.45, subtract the binding energy, I get uh, 1.45, and that should be the correct answer. And it asks, at what value of opposing voltage being applied will no more electrons reach the anode? Now, here's a really interesting and useful thing about electron volt. What a, uh, did I talk about this already? Maybe not. What an electron volt is, well, I just said electron volt. And that is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's describing the energy change as the charge of the electron. So let me just write down 
electron charge times, or rather, one electron charge times one volt. Now, we ask, all right, for an electron uh, going over some voltage difference, how much uh, ele electric charge it has? Well, it has charge of one electron charge. <laughs> That's kind of a uh, uh, soft consistent description. So when an electron goes over one volt voltage difference, it undergoes change of energy of one electron volt. So uh, the answer here comes out to be really simple. At an opposing voltage of 1.45 volts, the electrons, as it goes through that voltage difference, it will lose 1.45 electron volt of energy, which is the maximum kinetic energy it could have. So it won't be able to climb that hill. So that's it. Uh, let me submit this to show that the answers are correct. Uh, yeah, correct answers. Good. Let's move on. Six. All right. I need to plug in numbers here. So let's do that. Uh, it says something about the uh, De Broglie hypothesis, and this relationship is probably important to help you make some number sense for what this means. Try below calculations. All right. It sounds like I need the uh, Planck's constant, constant I have, and the uh, momentum to give me the wavelength calculation. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, review of nature of matter. Uh, and because I need to re remember this relationship, the hint is helpfully giving me this relation, give, giving me this information. That momentum is given by mass times velocity. So hopefully we have um, mass. Oh, wait, do I need to look up electron mass? Uh, yeah, let's look up electron mass. By the way, if you are using Ultram Alpha, you can just type in electron mass because the thing will look it up for you. Um, yeah, I need electron, 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 yeah. Uh, by the way, we have electron mass in the textbook. If you go down to the, I mean, you can also Google it. That's, uh, that's also another way to get it. Under useful information, it will list a, ton, a bunch of uh, um, constants. And one of the constants is the electron mass. There it is. I'm going to need to know that in the SI unit, the 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Let me write that down. Um, so electron mass is equal to 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilogram. Um, and I think that might be it. Um, yeah. So the wavelength, according to the De Broglie relationship, should be uh, wavelength of anything, any object that has momentum is Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the thing, which uh, we can, using the relationship between momentum and mass and velocity, I can write it, this down as Planck's constant divided by mass times the velocity. Um, if I keep everything in SI units, I'll get the wavelength in SI units, and then I can work it out from there. So, all right, let's plug in the numbers for part uh, A. So we have the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant, um, six point. Oh, wait, there is electron mass. Uh, I should have looked harder. Um, 6.626 <laughs> times 10 to minus 34 uh, joule times second divided by the electron mass uh, times the speed. So 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilogram times um, velocity. 4210 meters per second. And I'm going to, I'm not going to necessarily work out all the units. Uh, what I'm just going to hope for is that um, uh, this is the promise of SI unit system. That when you use all the correct units, basic SI units, then your final answer should have unit of meters. 
If it doesn't, then something went horribly wrong. <laughs> um, so, all right, let's uh, uh, write that down so, or do that on a calculator. So I have 6.626 6 times 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by, and I could do parentheses thing, but let me just divide both numbers. 9.11 times the 10 to the power of minus 31. By the way, be careful with something like this. If you are literally typing in times 10 to minus 31, you should probably put parentheses. Um, it's about the whole order of operation. So um, always double check your final answer makes sense. Divided by this number, 4210 meters per second. 4210. Uh, let's see what we get. We get a super small number. So let me write this down here. Uh, the number we get is um, 1.728 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, you can't just plug in this number because it's not asking for the answer in meters. It's asking for answer in nanometers. This is where it's whole, uh, helpful to remember that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the minus nine meters, or to flip the other way around, one meter is equal to 10 to the nine nanometers. So I can basically plug this in for the implied one meter here. When I do, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get my answer in the units of nanometers. So let's do that. Uh, I have that number there multiplied by uh, one times power of nine. Um, all right, so that's uh, equal to um, 170, um, let's say three, 173 nanometers. All right, that's interesting. Oh, it says it's, it corresponds to the thermal speed of an electron that has been cooled down to about one Kelvin. All right. Um, let's see, do I want to do those other numbers? You know, I don't think I need to do those other parts B and C. So assuming I got part A correctly, all you need to do in parts B and C is just change the number for speed from uh, 4,210 meters to some larger numbers. And what I hope you will see is that the wavelength gets actually very, very much shorter. So, um, so yeah. Um, wait, then should I? Uh, yeah, I, I think you can just plug in those numbers in a non-scientific notation if you want. Or you could use scientific notation and I'll get to that maybe later. So submit. Good, 173. Uh, nanometers is uh, hum, uh, the wavelength of an electron, frankly, moving very slow. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Hmm. I think it's exactly the same calculation as the one before. I wish I hadn't erased all those formulas because I could have just reused them. So let me do this correctly. <laughs> the Broglie relationship is wavelength is equal to Planck's constant over momentum. And since we are being given uh, masses and the speeds, really momentum should be re-expressed using this relationship, mass times velocity, that the momentum, in, uh, the de Broglie wavelength is Planck's constant divided by mass times the velocity of the particle. All right. So uh, each of the questions kind of gives you the uh, mass you are using and the velocity you are using. So uh, let me just uh, pick the most uh, ridiculous example possible and use the one with uh, Earth. Uh, so, you know, if we now learn about Planck, uh, de Broglie wavelength, then we want to figure out what is the wavelength of the Earth. Let's plug in those numbers and see. So the, my wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by mass times the velocity of the object whose de Broglie wavelength I'm measuring. I think I have all the numbers, so let me just um, plug in stuff. Um, oops, uh, calculator. 
So Planck's constant, that is uh, 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by mass of the Earth. It's very high. 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms divided once again by the speed of the Earth around the Earth. Uh, 29,000 and 800 meters per second. It's pretty fast. All right, uh, all of that is equal to 3.71 times 10 to the minus 63. Um, all right, let me um, plug in that number. Now, one thing that I hope you will notice before you um, fail too many times is yeah, many of these numbers are absurdly small, which is why I'm not even bothering with the, the power of 10 here. Um, and you should enter the powers of 10 using this notation here. This is what we call E notation. You start out with a leading number and this uh, single letter says that, oh, what follows is the power of 10. So I have this here, 3.71 times 10 to the power of minus 63. So let me just uh, type that in. I, I guess if you're starting from calculator, it suspiciously looks like what's already on your calculator. So, um, so you know, it suspiciously looks like that. By the way, lowercase sometimes works, but uh, get into the habit of getting uppercase for this. That's what everyone uses. So the De Broglie wavelength is, yep, yeah, 3.71 times 10 to the power of minus 63. Um, this is a ridiculously small number. There's a, a lot of people think that this is a smaller than um, fundamentally measurable distance. So let me just leave that there. Um, moving on, uh, question 12. All right, that's more calculation. Uh, it says, according to the Bohr model, the allowed energy levels were blah. Using this model, we'll calculate one of the possible wavelengths in the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. Follow the directions below. When necessary, use this value of Planck's constant in the electron volt unit. For some reason, I guess that must be more convenient. And speed of light, um, this number. But I'll use a 3 times 10 to the 8. That usually is close enough. Let me look at the hint. Do I give any more hint? Oh, I do, yeah. You should read the textbook. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's always a good idea to at least scheme the textbook sections. And here, if you read through it, some benefits you will get is, um, I don't know if you necessarily need this as well, but well, be aware that there's a formula there. And you have this representation of the spectrum, which it's good to have it in your head. And uh, you get it the board model. Um, I think this is what I want you to look at, the transitions from one level to another level. That's a useful thing to be aware of. Um, yeah, uh, here's the whole series of transitions. Uh, what we call Lyman series, Balmer series, Passion series, and actually only the Balm, well, not only. Balmer series, only? I think it might be only. Balmer series is the one within the visible range. Lyman series, the energy difference is so much that you get into ultraviolet. I think a Passion series is where it's uh, uh, small enough energy that the wavelengths are long enough that you get into a non-visible range, more like infrared. Um, so, you know, uh, skip the chapter and read all this. It's a useful thing to know. Uh, let's uh, look back here and see what I need to do. Um, yeah, it starts out with a suppose that the electron jumps from a given energy level down to another energy level. So what you're going to need is this formula here. I mean, there are other formulas too, but um, but Oh, wow, it's not in the summary. Uh, there are other formulas too, but the other formulas are a bit more cumbersome to use. Uh, formula that you need is this one. Um, and, and <laughs> sorry, this uh, I should have highlighted this better. It's the orbital energy. Um, 
which is easier for you to figure out. Um, yeah, I, I need to reorganize this. I mean, you could use this formula here, but the thing that'll make it difficult um, is, um, you know, you have to convert the wavelength to relationship to energy. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let me write this down as the one that's to e that that'll make things easiest for you. The orbital energy formula, uh, which is this one. And I recommend that you just use this one, 13.6 electron volts. I mean, there's all these things, but, you know, plugging the numbers there, it's a lot of unnecessary work. What's useful for you is that the, the energy levels of the electron is given by this. So, <laughs> yeah, that might be something I should have fixed. Um, so let me write it down here. Uh, uh, energy levels of the electron uh, characterized by the, the quantum number n is minus 13.6 electron volts over n squared. So when it says that electron jumps from one level down to another level, what you need to know are the, the values of those two energy levels. So let me just do that calculation on a calculator here. So uh, I can do that for the energy level n equals four. Let me just plug in the numbers there. Um, uh, minus sign, I'm just gonna write it down later. So 13.6 divided by level four squared, four to the uh, four squared, all right, equals 0 0.85. All right, let me write that down. Uh, e4 is equal to minus 0 0.85 electron volts. All right, seems reasonable. Let's keep going. Uh, energy level um, E two, so I need to do this calculation again. 13.6 uh, divided by energy level two, two squared is equal to 3.4. Don't forget the minus sign. It's minus 3.4 electron volts. All right. So as you look at these two numbers, what I hope you uh, realize is that um, because of this minus sign here, the greater number means actually a lower value because it's more negative. So the uh, n equals four energy level is higher than n equals two energy level. It's uh, less negative. So, um, so, you know, I hope all of that makes sense. So when a photon goes from this energy level to here, it's uh, losing energy. And the amount of energy that it's losing, you can uh, calculate it here. It's basically the difference between these two numbers. Uh, let me do this as 3.4, I already had that, minus uh, 0 0.85, so 2.55. So that's it, uh, hopefully that's correct, 2.55. Um, electron loses that much energy. All right, uh, let's see. Let me submit it and see if uh, um, I get the correct answer there. Submit. Um, oh, good. Um, all right, uh, let's keep going. So it says, um, no. So you need a, uh, I in a question like this, I do highly recommend that you do earlier parts first because you need an earlier part to get the answers to the later part because the part B relates to energy lost by the electron, which goes into the um, which goes into the photon uh, which goes into the photon energy which is where now you remember, oh, photon energy, energy of a photon is given by Planck constant times frequency. So you use the Planck constant, which is given here, 
And I gave it to you in the electron volt units because I kind of figured you will be answering um, in electron volt units. So you can solve this for frequency of the photon. Um, oh, so you might need to do a little bit of an algebra here. Divide both sides by Planck constant. Then you get the frequency of the photon. Frequency of the photon is equal to the energy of the photon that we have from uh, earlier calculation divided by the Planck constant H. Um, so let's plug in the numbers. We have uh, two point, oh, I already have 2.55 in electron volt units divided by the Planck constant in electron volt units, 4.136 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 15 um, is equal to, oh, darn, that's a super large number. Um, you know what, I can, so you could use uh, scientific notation, and if that's how your calculator gave it to you, great. Use that, please, here. I just have all these digits, so I'm just going to plug that in. <laughs> Let me push that off to the side so that I can look at it. So I'm going to have 616-537-717-601-547, and then it's a 0.38, whatever. Three nine. Um, now, obviously, this is not really all that recommended, but um, this does give you the right answer. And if you want to convert that to scientific notation, great, good job. Um, but just uh, entering it that way is fine. Um, converting a large number like that into scientific notation is not a skill I'll be testing you on an exam, so uh, you don't really need to uh, practice that. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, part C, given the answers to A and B above. So, so, um, um, so, so I'm just working down each question because in part C, now I need to know the answer to part B. So I'm being asked for the wavelength of the photon. This is where hopefully you'll remember the relationship between frequency and wavelength. You have this relationship that wave speed or the speed of light is equal to frequency of the light times the wavelength of the light. Or solving that for wavelength, wavelength is equal to speed of the light divided by the frequency of the light. So, um, so yeah, I need to just plug in the numbers. I have the speed of the light here. I have my frequency um, of the light here, which also, I also have there. So let's just plug in the numbers. Um, I have uh, 2.998 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by, let me just type in all that, uh, Six one six five three seven seven one seven six zero one five four seven point three nine. I don't actually have to enter that many, but let me just do that. It's uh, easier, oddly enough. All right. Then I get this number here. This is where I do have to be careful. I'm asked for answer in the units of nanometers. This is where you do need to remember that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of minus nine meters, or um, one meter is equal to multiplying both sides by 10 to the nine, uh, 10 to the nine, I get, 10 to the 9 nanometers. Or another way to put it is there's 10 to the 9 nanometers in one meter. So on this calculator, what I need to do is, uh, this is in meters, so that's, uh, um, so I'm replacing one meter with a 10 to the 9 nanometers. So let me do that times, uh, one times 10 to the 9 nanometers. So, okay. 486 nanometers, yeah, 486.
So yeah. Good. So this is all done. Good. Um, so this is a chapter 13. I think the remaining two questions are not calculation questions. Yeah. So you can do that on your own.